Hi guys, Dr. Joe Brown. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Fragile X Syndrome. Fragile X Syndrome. Why do I want to go over this with you? This is a genetic condition that everybody needs to know. And I understand that just me mentioning those words, probably 99% of the people that are going to watch this video initially will not even know what I'm referring to. And that's why I'm doing this video, because you need to know it. It affects you. It affects your daughters, your sons. It affects your grandkids. It affects your future line of genetics. And nobody's talking about it. And that's why I want to put this video out. So genetic conditions. Now, before I went to medical school, when I was in college doing my pre-med courses, we all take genetic courses. And what happens is, is that most of us, we take the genetic courses, which start out pretty simple and then get hard really quick. Most of us pass it and we never think about genetics again. And unfortunately, this was my situation as well until we went to medical school. And then we went to medical school. What happened is, is that we are then put through a medical terminology and full applied genetic course in medical school. And same thing, unless you're going to become a geneticist, most people don't understand genetics, not one bit. And this, is the, and this is part of the problem in our society, not just with the United States, but across the world. Too many people are being diagnosed with one genetic condition or another. We have Down syndrome, we have Fragile X syndrome, we have cystic fibrosis, some of these more commonly known organizations who have published stuff and the public has heard the names, but they don't really know what it's about. And unless it's affecting you at this moment, Nobody is talking about it because nobody knows the information. So what I want to do with you is I want to go into some of the information and I'm going to be, I wrote down a few points here that I'm just going to be covering with you because it's a very long detailed description and I'm going to try to narrow this down to just the bullet point so that you understand what we're talking about. So what is Fragile X Syndrome and why do you need to know about it? Fragile X Syndrome is the most common genetic mental retardation or disability that is diagnosed in people. And that's why I want you to know about it. Because what happens is, is too many times when the mother is pregnant and she's getting ready to deliver a baby, none of the physicians are talking to you about doing genetic testing previous to delivering. And this is a huge mistake. Most times your insurance will cover it. Sometimes you need to pay for it out of pocket. It's a few hundred dollars. It could be up to six, seven, eight hundred dollars at the very, very most. And it'll save you and your future children and grandchildren a lifetime of problems. Okay? So what is Fragile X Syndrome? Now, Fragile X Syndrome is a FMR1 gene, also called the repeat gene. And so what happens is, is this is a CGG. So if you know anything about genetics, there are certain letters that we use to represent what happens when the genes are laid down from the mother and from the father. And so just getting rid of the boring part of this story here for one second so I can get into detail with you on why this is important. What happens is when the mother and father, when their genes are being laid down on that initial moment and the child is being in, in the reproductive areas of forming, what happens is that the CGG repeats should be between essentially 6 to 44. That is what normal people or, or normally is laid down. Anytime you are above that number of 44, you then have what is known as possibly an intermediate condition, a premutation condition, or a fragile X syndrome. Now, so, so essentially what, what we're talking about here is there's four different classifications of this. There's normal, which is 6 to 44. There's 45 to 54, which is intermediate. There is the premutation, which is 55 to 200. And then there's fragile X, which they say is greater than 200. Okay. Now, this affects boys. One in every 4,000 boys is affected with this. And if they're affected with it, it gives them severe retardation or severe mental disability. One in 8,000 girls are affected with this, 
and it gives them mild disability problems and learning disability problems. Now, the large number of CGG repeats causes the gene to turn on and off consistently. And this is what leads to the mental disability and behavioral problems, etc., which I'm going to go into in one second. Now, this leads to not just learning and disability problems, but behavioral problems, social skill problems, etc. One in every 50 women are diagnosed with an intermediate problem with this, okay? So it is your responsibility. And the reason why I'm putting this video out is that if you are, are over, if you're already over the childbearing age, please tell your kids about this and tell them to get genetic testing done previous to having the baby in the first trimester, because it will tell them the chances and the likelihood of having any genetic condition, not just this one, but any of them. Okay. It is your duty to tell them this. It's very, very important. So one in every 50 women are going to be diagnosed in that intermediate allele range. So in other words, from 45 to 54. Okay. Now what happens from that? Now, let me just read you a, a couple. Let me just read you essentially about five bullet points of what happens if you're diagnosed. So both males and females who are premutation carriers occasionally have the five following problems. Number one, attention deficit disorder. Most of us have heard about this because it's been on the news and it's the, the word or the terms have been thrown around where we think God, someone just doesn't pay attention. It's ADD. Well, there's a little bit more to that. Okay. So I'm not going to go into the detail of every single thing, but first one, attention deficit disorder. Number two, behavioral problems. Number three, problems with attention, which is different than attention deficit disorder. Number four, difficulty with social skills and social anxiety. So this is friendships they're making when they're little, how they're reacting with mothers, fathers, siblings, and this all is going to play into effect and it's going to build on each other why the disability is going to be so severe with the kids. And number five, they have a serious risk of developing neurological, a neurological condition called Fragile X Associated Tremor, also known as Ataxia Syndrome. And this is abbreviated as FXTAS. This does not happen in childhood, but this will actually occur in late adulthood with them, okay? So let me now go into the what happens when somebody is diagnosed in this intermediate 45 to 54 CGG repeat allele situation. So like I said, this is more common in boys, one in 4,000, whereas in girls, one in 8,000. But when the girls are diagnosed with this and they're about to have a baby and their genetics are tested, it is the females that actually pass this along. So in other words, what I'm saying is that if your son is diagnosed with an intermediate range of these CGG repeats, most of the time it is not passed on or if it is passed on, it's passed on at a very low degree, okay? So it's our daughters that we're actually concerned about of having this. And so if, for example, in that 45 to 54 range, if you are lower in that range, so for example, 47 versus higher in that range, so that range goes up to 54, let's say you were 52, 51, 53, somewhere in there, that also plays a role on how many of those CGG repeats you are going to pass on to your children. Okay, now, for example, if you are in the intermediate low area, you have an 86% chance of passing on normal amount of CGG repeats. That's the good news. But you still have a 14% chance of passing an increased amount of CGG repeats. Okay, so I want to read to you. Now, some of the percentages of the likelihood of being diagnosed with this, okay? Now, for example, just so that everyone is clear, what I'm referring to is, let's just say your daughter was diagnosed in the intermediate CGG repeats. 
Our concern is not just what happens with her, but what happens with her children in the future. And so if she is diagnosed in that intermediate CGG repeat area, she is at no risk to have a problem herself. And she is at, let me use the correct word, she is not at a increased risk to have a child with an increased CGG risk or Fragile X syndrome. But she is at risk of passing on an increased amount of CGG repeats to her kids. And her kids, depending on how many they receive, will or will not pass it on to their children. So the reason why when I started this video, I said it is your duty, and I mean this from all my heart, it is your duty to share this video and pass this to your family and your friends because nobody is testing for this and it's a mistake. So let me give you some of these percentages of what happens and why I'm, why I'm so serious about this subject. So if your daughter, for example, in our scenario we're using, was an intermediate allele individual, when she passes on those CGG repeats to her daughter and or son, if she passes on from 55 to 59 CGG repeats, the likelihood of her kids, son or daughter, being diagnosed with Fragile X syndrome is 3.7%. If she passes on 60 to 69 CGG repeats, she is passing on or giving her kids a 5.3% chance of having Fragile X syndrome. So in, rel in relative spectrum here, really low still at this point. Here's where it changes. If she passes on 70 to 79, she now gives her kids a 31.1% chance of Fragile X syndrome. 80 to 89, 57.8% chance. 90 to 99, jumps up to 80.1%. 100 to 139 CGG repeats, the chances of her kids having Fragile X is 94.4% to 100%. And if she passes on greater than 139 CGG repeats, there is 100%, not chance, but 100% that, that her kids will have Fragile X syndrome, okay? Again, in premutation allele carriers by the fathers, they are usually stable. And on occasion, they might even be reducing in size the amount they're passing on. So in other words, giving the kids a normal amount. So really what we're looking at is the female genetics of not just your daughter and her kids, specifically her daughter, and going forward on that female side of the genes. So I hope that's been helpful because it is something that unless you can find a geneticist, and most doctors have a hard time finding a geneticist, to be honest, that is information and statistics that are current as of April 2020. And if you have any questions about this, or you've been diagnosed, or you just have general questions about this, contact me. I'm happy to help you and go over some of this information. I can, I can send you this information or, or go over certain bullet points with you to help guide you through this process because you're either in two groups. You're either watching this video because you've been diagnosed with some form of a genetic condition, whether it be Fragile X or another one, and you don't know where to turn for answers, or you're in the other 99% group of people, which is just as important. You're the people who I ask you, please, Share this video, send it to your family and your friends, because if we can do a simple genetic test and diagnose the percent chance of your kids and your grandkids having genetic problems, why wouldn't you do it? I'm Dr. Joe Brown. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. Your health is in your hands.